Starting at the midline of the fuselage, we slowly move the smoke lines. Note how the shadow of the smoke line moves across the top of the wing. You can see how the airflow is affected by the plane structure. If you look closely, you can see how increasing alpha increases the lift. But what happens to the total aerodynamics when we increase alpha beyond that recommended? You guessed it, stall. Curiously, many inexperienced pilots tend to attempt to raise the nose of the stalled aircraft because of the sensation of falling, which of course increases the angle of attack and brings on deeper stall. What must be done to recover from stall is to lower the angle of attack and make the aircraft fly again by putting all the forces in balance. Let's watch the stall develop from above this airfoil. Note that the stall begins, at least on this shape wing, near the fuselage. This is due to the wing twist, or washout as it is called. The pilot would begin to feel the effects of stall before it reaches the control surfaces. But if he didn't heed this warning, or a properly working stall warning horn, the turbulence would work its way out until the entire wing is stalled. While we're looking at the top of a wing's aerodynamics, Note that air from under the wing tip tends to work outward and toward the top of the wing as it leaves the airfoil. At the same time, the air above the wing is deflected downward. The air mass tries to balance itself. This is of considerable consequence because it sets up violent whirlpools of air called vortices. And one of these disturbances could last for as much as several minutes in the air. A vortex like this one is an invisible hazard, especially around busy airports where large, heavy aircraft form them during takeoff and landing. They are the reason we always try to avoid the known paths of large, heavy, arriving and departing aircraft. Flight maneuvers create factors for the pilot to consider. For example, an airplane in a tight turn adds impressive centrifugal forces. The forces are out of balance in such attitudes and the pilot must adjust to them accordingly. Turbulence, too, is an outside factor seriously affecting the aircraft's aerodynamics. But these are whole subjects in themselves and should be reviewed extensively by pilots as part of their continuing self-training. What we have seen is, of course, by no means the complete aerodynamic story. It's only a beginning to be added to by experience and reviewed throughout a pilot's flying career. The better a pilot understands the basic aerodynamics of flying, the safer he will be able to fly. And knowing how airplanes fly is essential to the skill and enjoyment of flying. Thank you.